All right, all right. Um, let me know if you guys can hear my voice okay. Hopefully you can. What's up, Zachy? Can you hear me okay? What's up, Ronald? All right, good. How's everybody doing today? This thing up here. Good. Good, good, good. therapy that's right all right we got this is good yeah 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 no problem I mean it's unfortunate you know I had to go through all that to make a new channel, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so what I'm doing now, that's that. We'll put up our little countdown guy. We'll give it like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Gotta jump on a plane in a couple hours. What's going on, everybody? Make sure you jump in the Facebook group and uh, share the post um, right over there, pinned to the top of the page. Uh, number one Bitcoin group in the world. Uh, 
uh, share the post right there that I pinned to the top. And someone will win. So that's the post right there. You need to jump on and share that post. And uh, you will uh, be our winner for today.
All right, all right. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Boom, boom. We need to switch this thing out. Like a boss. Huh. Huh. Live from the USA helping you get paid every day. This is the boss of Bitcoin, the Cristo of crypto. It's your boy BK, and if you don't like me, you must not like money. Thank you for joining me, everybody. It is uh, May 11th, May 10th in the morning, getting it in early on a Thursday. Uh, got a nice little uh, video for you guys today. Buffett versus Bitcoin. Granddaddy don't like it when the little kids run around and getting their own money. He want them to stay in the house, do their homework, do their chores. You know, you bet not run out there, start your own business, run around with this cryptocurrency, making millions. No, wait in line for 30 years like everybody else. <laughs> no, no, we won't be doing that. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is we'll actually dissect and digest his latest... Uh, spiel you know um i don't know i'm trying to be respectful of this old man but you know some people just pass their prime what can i say this is your first time tuning in congratulations baby you are now rocking with the best my name is bk uh known as the crypto trader and i am the boss of these charts as you will soon find out Every day, I grace this microphone with my voice as another day. You get the profit as a result, and today is no exception. So with that being said, we're about to jump into our Facebook page right now. I got this post that I put on during that countdown. I said, share that post if you're trying to get paid, and this is what I'm going to do. Um, what I'm going to do is every month, I'm going to give away a couple hundred dollars straight cash. Uh, and so... I'll just start picking one person a day to go on that list. And then uh, for our community appreciation video, I'll actually select that winner live on that show. And I'll start a little list right now. Uh, shout out to Big Aaron. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, sir? I see you. Good to have you back. Um, so we got three people. <laughs> Aaron, I think you won once. I haven't seen this person. Big Chris Coolis. Bam. Uh, I'm going to write your name down, um, put it on the list. I'll start like a little Excel sheet thing. And then uh, you are entered in the contest, May, May 10, right? And that way, you know, people don't have to try to track me down. Uh, after every video, right? This is the number one Bitcoin group in the world. Hashtag one Bitcoin. Uh, type it in. We got 20,000 of my best friends to come together seven days a week, keep each other empowered and in profit in the marketplace. Um, it's really an amazing community. So if this is your first time tuning in, then congratulations, baby. You are officially a part of history. This is the fastest growing most successful world renowned crypto community um and we're looking forward to the future so come on in the doors are always open make sure you smash that like button you know what i'm saying and subscribe copy and paste this url text somebody you love and tell them it's time to get paid let's get back 
to today's discussion. Mm, mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? And what make me mad? What make me mad when I watch this whole spiel? What make me mad is they had them sitting up on CNBC. You know what I'm saying? Like one of them big, <laughs> one of them big plantation owners, because that's what he owned. The biggest plantation in the world is called Berkshire Hathaway. You know what I'm saying? Chances are every dollar you spend, a fraction of it goes to him. Um, and and just the disinformation. They talk about, you know, I can't even say fake words anymore. You know what I'm saying? But I sure enough can't write it down. So, you know, they talk about this kind of stuff. Right? They talk about that kind of stuff. This is where it comes from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you got all these rich rich men in suits, ten thousand dollar suits, two thousand dollar cufflinks, you know what I'm saying? Uh and they tell trying to tell you how to make money. Like they in business to make you money. They not in business to make you money. They in business to take your money, right? So don't listen to them. Don't listen to them, right? Um, and that's the system that they designed. So what we'll do is I'm going to chop off the first minute of his little, you know, uh, pre-nursing home spiel. Um, you know, he got a couple years left before he, you know, before he'll probably be checked in. So, you know, I understand his mind might be going a little bit at this time, but let's just listen to what this, what he said. And, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll show the facts, show the statistics, pull up the data, and then we'll make our own educated and informed decision. At some point this weekend, you said that Bitcoin, and this was basically, you were asked, Charlie said Bitcoin's like rat poison. You were asked about that comment, and you said, well, it's probably more like uh, rat poison squared. Uh, Charlie went on in the meeting to then basically call Bitcoin turds. Um, he, he is an expressive sort, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when he gets a little older, he'll, he'll mature. <laughs> I just want to ask you about that because it sparked so much controversy, and uh, particularly on Twitter and some of the places where you might expect people who are trading in, in cryptocurrency uh, to be pretty um, loud yeah. about what they heard. What, what is it about Bitcoin that gets you guys so fired up? Well, when you buy a farm, uh, you look at the crop every year and, and what prices are, and you decide whether it was a satisfactory investment. I mean, you, you look to the asset itself and what it produces for you. When we buy a business, we look at what the business earns and decide how we feel about it in terms of what we paid. But we are buying something that at the end of the period, we not only have what we bought in the first place, but we have something that the asset produced. All right. So that's all you got. I'm going to break this out in about four or five different episodes, but it's a lot we can take away from, you know, that first minute of discussion first of all if you notice the words that were running around the bottom of the screen stocks still best place for average investor right i'm gonna talk over the video this time point this weekend you before. said let's, that let's mute the bobbleheads and then i'll commentate the message that's not being said buffett it's hard for us to find something to buy um Stocks are not in a bubble. That means as long as they keep printing up this fake money, we'll keep buying stuff with the fake money. And it's not a bubble because they'll just keep printing more fake money. It's like Monopoly. You just keep going around the game, going around the board. The game never ends. The money keeps coming, right? Stocks are still the best place for an average investor. Look at you. You're an idiot. You should have stocks. You can't figure out cryptocurrencies. They go up 20, 30% in a day. That's not where you want to be. You want to do stocks, a nice 8% yield, and make your money over the long haul. Look how old I am. I've been making money for the past 50 years. Why? Because I get fake money and I buy fake stocks and more people like me buy fake stocks and we make our money over time. Bitcoin has no value. It's like the farmers. You know, when you own the land and you farm on the land, you get the fruit, the fruit has value. That's the first grade economic insinuative correlation that he gave us. A lot of people do think farmers own their own fruit. However, 
they don't. And this is a system of design. Uh, when he started talking about that farmer, that dairy farmer, one of the things I immediately jumped to was that conversation that uh, Frank Lucas had with Dominic, the Italian, the two mob heads met, you know, and he talked about success took a shot at you. You know, what you're going to do, you're going to become unsuccessful. And, and but one of the one of the illusions that he gave was to the farmer in particular. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a clip out that movie. It's an amazing. Maybe it was one of your people. Real quick and then we'll talk about what he said. I don't know. Yeah. You don't know. No. You don't know. I tell you what I know. Maybe I should just uh, put 500 guns out there on the street and just start shooting up some people just to make a point. Franco was a junkie. He right? was a rival. Some dumbass kid trying to make a name for himself. Yeah. Someone you forgot to pay off. Someone you slighted, without even realizing it. Could be someone you put out of business for being so successful. Look at you. <laughs> Success. It's got enemies, right? Lots of enemies, so. Your success took a shot at you. What are you gonna do now? How are you gonna kill it? You gonna become unsuccessful? Frank, we can be successful and have enemies, right? We can be unsuccessful too, you know? We can have friends. That's a choice we make. Right? And so, essentially, what they're debating is how to remain successful while the industry allows for your success. Um, because people don't like a monopoly. Uh, and this is what Granddaddy Buffett got that he's not talking about. He's talking about his monopoly. He's talking about the number one uh, stock in the world um, Berkshire Hathaway that owns 20 or 30 percent of all the land in the United States that essentially uh, probably about three to five percent of every dollar ever spent you know this year goes back to him to funnel through his monopoly um, but specifically in that movie they have another scene I couldn't find it uh, but they have another scene where you know Frank goes and allows Dominic to work for him, right? And and the logic that Dominic gave was Frank had a monopoly. He needed to let him work for him to distill the power of his monopoly. And, and Dominic said, monopolies are illegal in this country, Frank. No one can compete with a monopoly. If they let dairy farmers do that, half of them be out of business tomorrow. Frank said, I'm just trying to make a living, which is right because this is America but not at the unreasonable expense of others. That's un-American. You know the price you pay for a gallon of milk doesn't represent the true cost of production. It's controlled, set. I think the price I set is fair. It's very unfair, in fact. Your customers are happy, but what about the other dairy farmers? You're not thinking of them. Thinking about them as much as they think of me. So you can see this is, this is what Buffett is talking about behind the scenes. He's talking about the dairy farmers and their asset and growing for your own benefit, but that's not reality, right? So whose version of reality is right? Is it is it Granddaddy Buffett sitting on the couch with the bobblehead microphone in his voice, or is it these two gangsters chopping up, you know, the land for for cook coke crack in the 80s, 60s, 70s, one of those, right? Whose version is right? One saying that the farmer has all the power and the other saying the farmer don't have any of the power. The price needs to be set. The industry needs to be controlled. It's un-American when you have power and others do not. Fact of the matter is, it's closer to the gangster's version than it is Granddaddy Buffett's. This is why. Um, going up to school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. Shout out Madtown on Wisconsin. You know what I'm saying? Number 56 on the field. Look it up. B. Kelly says historical struggles detour next generation of farmers. Tell me something. Is that some? Do that look like a successful owned business to you right there? No. These farmers in this country are struggling, right? Six generation, 320 acre farm about to go out of business. Now, one of the things they talk about is the price, which is basically Granddaddy Buffett's corporation getting richer while the regular people paying into it get poorer. That's all inflation is. The rich get richer and you get poorer. They just do it at three to five percent a year. So you never actually feel it. Right. 
But the fact of the matter is, these farmers are dirt poor because the government has come in, subsidized, and regulated their own business to create this sense of fairness in an industry. And now you have entire cities, again, going back to Wisconsin, Boston, right? Entire cities and industries that are about to go under. All in a sense of so-called fairness. Well, fair to who? That's who you should be asking. Who is it fair for? when you have all of these different things happening behind the scenes. This is another, this is another article, Farm Futures, uh, the uncertain future of ag trade, right? They talk about the civil war in cotton and then they talk about the North America free trade agreement and all these great things that all these government regulations were supposed to do. But at the end of the day, the only thing it did was contribute to the downfall of the individual corporation and so he knows this that's the thing he knows that when you have a system in place that essentially does not act on its own behalf it acts as a fiduciary to a governance he knows that that's not good right he wouldn't be the number one business in the world if the government had to come in and say you know what warren you did good but we don't want you to too, do too good. You know what I'm saying? We got to let all these other guys in here have some of this, right? He would, that didn't happen to him, but it happened to the farmers. And now the farmers are about to be homeless, right? Six generation, 320 acres about to go back to the banks because they can't even run their own business and retain equity of their own asset, their own crop, their own product. He said this about minimum wage. He said, I may wish to have all jobs at least $15 an hour. Notice he said, I may wish, not that I do wish. You see how they, they play on these associative uh, verbs, right? But that minimum would almost certainly reduce employment in a major way. Notice that again, almost certainly. Like, not nothing's for sure, but, you know, it could lean this way. I may wish almost certain. This is a way how you contradict yourself and always be right because you never say anything. You never give a straight answer, right? Many workers with basic skills, smaller increases. Americans will be in poverty. That's his way of saying, don't raise the minimum wage. Don't make me pay these poor people more money because then I'll have to fire more poor people. That's the exact same thing the government is doing with the farmers um, by saying that you can't make more money because then we'll have more farmers. So we'll come in and take control of this. We'll set your prices and we'll put your sixth or seventh generation out of business slowly over time. That way you don't feel it all at once. And so as you listen to these bobbleheads talk on TV, understand what's being said behind the scenes. Do your own research. Go and look up what does a farmer make in a year? He's talking about how great the lives of the farmers are. Why are they great? They're great because the banks own everything. The banks own the manufacturing equipment that the farmer took out a $3 million loan for just to stay competitive. The banks own the crops, which are backed by Monsanto, which has all the legal and IP for half of the agriculture in our business. And they own the distribution, the downstream distribution through uh, Bayer, Purdue, and ConAgra, right? But he's not talking about that. He's just, you know, saying, making making a little sly little joke, uh, talking about, oh, it's, 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 what did he say? It's, uh, it's like the farmers on the farm. Well, no, it's not. What he just said is, is like what, what's found on a farm, uh, left over, you know, as, as, a, as a byproduct to this economic destruction to the farmer's lifestyle. And so it's always best to be cognizant of what's actually being said. And then also to do the research, go dig up the data, understand how municipalities and governances have destroyed 
any individualized aspiration that, you know, people used to have. Now it's all an illusion. It doesn't mean anything. I keep telling you all the time, this has no value. That hurt a lot of people. Why? Why? It means nothing. The only value it has is the value you choose to give it. The minute you transition your value, you transition your worth. If you value monopoly money your whole life, you'll be running around that game never achieving nothing. A hamster on a wheel running a million miles an hour never going nowhere. The minute you elevate yourself, right? to a different source of value, something that is mined, perhaps, whether it be on the blockchain or from the ground, something with a scarcity, then you will have longevity in the market yet to come. And I'll be here right there with you, riding the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, and busting they head wide open on every seven over the 77. That being said, it's that time of the day. I got to go. Hey, we going to come back. You know what I'm saying? Let's uh, let's uh, jump over in our chat real quick. If you're in the chat, shout your country out. You know what I'm saying? I want to show my people some love. I see we got about 30, 40 people on this new channel. What's up? Rocking out with me one time. Uh, if you are new to the community, you can jump on over to patreon.com. Uh, this is a uh, extension of the Facebook group I've added. We have a lot of traders you know, in our group, a lot of people making a lot of real deal money. I've personally talked to people that have made hundreds of thousands. We're talking six zeros using my method. I give it to you for free. It is the real deal. Uh, but if you want to expand your capabilities, then I do have a few select products and services available on patreon.com. One of them specifically is the profit package. This is a, 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 a oldie, but a goodie. I brought it back in a, in a weekly format to where every Sunday I'm giving you the top seven coins in the market that are geared up to make some real deal money. So you just go on the Patreon, scroll on the right hand side, click that button and bam, it's time to get paid. And when you do that, you can see last week, you know, one of our coins made 16%. Bitcoin Cash hit him over the head with it. You know what I'm saying? Ran up. This is one of the best coins in the market probably for the rest of the year. Um, the average return using a boss method on a 77-minute candle was 4.8% Bitcoin. So while the rest of the market is struggling, you know, we're not thriving, but we're surviving. And that's the biggest thing you need to understand. The way you accumulate over the long haul is to never take a big loss. And that's what my method does better than anything. Right. And so let's go on, bring our people out, see who we got in a building. Big Chris, what's going on? Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Canada in the building. Philly. I see you, Poland, Bulgaria, Toronto, Houston, Kansas, Tennessee, Razorback Hack. What's going on? Let's get one more. I feel like we got one more in there somewhere. Ah, well, we'll get it next. There we go. Amsterdam. Bam! Hey. This rain is over. Sorry. Change your value, change your worth. And we will elevate ourselves amongst the disparity and the discrepancy and debt, death, and destruction that is on the ground floor around us. That being said, it's that time of the day signing out. This is the boats. Yo, boy, BK, no matter where you stay, Brazil to Bay or California, IA, all the way back up through Jer, my name. Good night, good morning, and good day. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time. Like, subscribe, and share. Bam! Join the money team. Do that for me if you appreciate mine. Until we meet again, stay cryptic, y'all. Peace. Like a boss. Huh. Huh.